I asked him a really simple question. Whose pho recipe is this? And I was surprised by what he said. This is actually pretty good. good. This is good. And this floating piece of lemon, that is a sign that you are a professional. That's right. Only the pros do that. If there's one thing I haven't done enough on this channel, it is smiling. And one of the reasons why I'm smiling today is I had a great fur the other night. In fact, it was one of the best furs I had in a really long time. And in this video, I wanted to tell you guys all about it. My name's Leighton and welcome to this week's episode of Fur Reviews. As you can see, the channel has certainly grown and I'm absolutely humbled by all the love and support for this channel wherever you guys are tuning in from. To be honest, it feels a bit weird because I f it was only three weeks ago when I sat here doing a video for reaching 100 subs and already the channel has grown almost one and a half times. But first, let me tell you about this bowl I had the other night. The story of this fur began on Sunday afternoon. I just finished work for the week and after a really long week here at the store, the weather was freezing. I could not think of anything better to do than just to sit at home under the heater. But for some reason, I found myself driving an hour down to the Gold Coast again. Now you might be wondering what on earth would compel me to do that? Was it some hot girl down on the Gold Coast? Did I receive the come down babe text? No, I received something even better. I got the come down bro text from my best friend. He was up from Sydney, and just like Elton John, he was down for one show only. So I had one opportunity to see him that night over dinner. Being the local host, I could have picked a hundred other places on the Gold Coast, but guess what? We ended up having a fur. I know, right? I am such a bad friend. I've got this really bad habit of just catching up with people I haven't seen in a couple of years. And instead of catching up like normal people do, I end up dragging them along for a review. Because the way I see it is, if I've driven an hour, I may as well squeeze in an episode. We ended up at this place in Broad Beach, just doing a quick Google search of Vietnamese Gold Coast. I started scrolling the list and I ended up at this place because of its name. Yo, yo. <laughs> hey, how are you? You are Chris. 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 Leighton Chris. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, What's going on? This is my other BFF, Ronald. We grew up in Cabramatta in Sydney together. We went to primary school together. We went to secondary school or high school. So essentially, we're brothers. And he came up with his roommate, Chris. As we were standing outside waiting for our tables to be ready, I started to get nervous. And I haven't been this nervous in such a long time. I think it's what performers refer to as stage fright, because as I was standing there, just looking around, the place was packed. And I'm talking like it was full. Every single table was full of people and the tables were just so close to each other and everyone was just staring at me. I just thought to myself, shit man, I don't think I can do this. I don't want to film this. I don't think I can do this episode. I started to freak out. It's like standing in the queue down at Dreamworld to get onto the scary roller coaster. You've been standing there for an hour. Now you're at the front of the queue getting strapped in. It's too late to bail out because everyone will just start looking at you funny. You're the guy who just chickened out. So we still made it in and I sat down because if I didn't, I wouldn't have an episode to talk about, right? 
and I actually owe it to you guys to film this. Driven an hour down here, just for a fur, because my BFF, Ronald here, he's driven, what, 10 hours? He's driven. I feel like 12, we had a breakdown in between. <laughs> yeah. So he's driven 12 hours up from Sydney overnight, so I thought I'd meet him halfway by driving an hour down here. <laughs> We're here to try the special beef noodle soup, 15.90. Two of, you joining me? I will join you. It's been about two years since I've seen you. Yeah, a good two years. And usually when your best best mate comes up, you know, you ask him, you know, do you want to hit the club? But not for me, it's like, do you want to, no. you want to grab a fur? That's right, that's how we roll. <laughs> What's going on here? Do you reckon it's counter service? Ah, right, let, let me, uh, let me get this. It's a high fur, not beer. What are you rolling on? It? Six old... S. <laughs> Six S. Jeez, and I thought my phone was old. It's Brisbane, yeah. What's that? There's no hot tea in this place. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is what happens when you've got a table right next to the door. Yeah. Got that nice Gold Coast breeze coming through. I escaped the weather to come here. <laughs> I just pretty much come back to the same weather. One degree difference. Oh yeah, my degree. goodness. Here we go, look at this. Since so Sydney, it's 13 at the moment. Yeah, it's driven all the way up here, and it's only one, one degree more. <laughs> we have a feast. So the garnish wise, looks like just a lot of spring onions. Can't really see any coriander. All right, bro, I'll let you do the honors of what I call the noodle pool test. So, pull it up. Yeah, that's good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hits the spot on a cold Sunday night. It does. Sure does. What do you give me a whole thing? Hmm. This is actually pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> no wonder it's packed. Usually whenever I go to a usually whenever I go to a Vietnamese restaurant that I don't know, I always get a fur first. That is a good benchmark. If they can get that right, pretty much everything else <laughs> is pretty good as well. Just looking at the meat, this one's called a special. All I can see really is just was it rare beef rare and beef, beef balls? balls. The ball bean. Maybe that's what they call a special on the Gold Coast. Definitely not in Cabra. <laughs> Pull it up again. Real high. Higher. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> Bro, you're going to do some ASMR for me. I just swear you. You just eat and just make it really loud, all right? Turns people on. Like I'm in Japanese, huh? Go for it. Okay, here we go. How is it, man? It's good. Everything's been good tonight. Are you surprised? I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, usually when you find a restaurant in a really popular place like, say, Broad Beach here, it's sometimes they don't do it authentically because it's aimed towards tourists. And I'm really surprised that this is very, very authentic. As in, I'm full blown Vietnamese, and this is spot on. You're not Vietnamese, and this is pretty spot on too, right? Spot on. It's alright, I got it. No, I'm gonna have a chat with him. I've got cash. That's alright. I'm gonna have a chat. When it came to paying the bill, Ronald insisted on paying, but he didn't understand the reason why I insisted on paying wasn't to be a hero. It was actually my chance to just go have a quick chat and try and get a story. 
So I went up and the waiter who served us our food, he processed my bill. And I asked him a really simple question. I asked him, whose fur recipe is this? And I was surprised by what he said. Công thức phở đó là của ai? Công thức này là của ông chủ của ông này trước đây. Xong rồi mấy năm gần đây là chuyện lại cho ông này cho cái đưa cái shop này cho ông luôn. Là lúc mà sang thì em làm chỉ lại. So the recipe apparently was the previous owner. So when the people here brought the store, you got to transfer the recipes, and the previous owner sold it and taught the owner now this recipe. Which I consider an excellent recipe, although it's slightly sweet, but then again, that's their interpretation. After paying the bill, we went for a brisk walk to try and find a bubble tea store. Oh, it's a beautiful night. We couldn't find one, so we ended up at a gelato store, which is which was a really bad idea because being a freezing night, the last thing you want to be doing is eating a gelato or ice cream. But that is exactly what we ended up doing. Luckily, I didn't get sick. What do you want? Chocolate. chocolate. Out of the whole cabinet, you just want chocolate. I'll get the Ferrero Rocher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ronald's never done this with me. Oh no, it's on the skew. There we go. Right, bro, I'm no foodie, I'm a chef. Yep. And I've got a really strict criteria when it comes to scoring a fur. I can right. see. So broth clarity, that's when we had a look at the broth. Mm -hmm. I put it in the water glass. I need to dispose of some water. Hmm. Tell you what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. That's, that's pretty good. This is my broth comparison for tonight. I've got water there. I've got the broth from tonight. And that's my Vietnamese coffee. That was really good. That, that scores a two. It was murky, yep. Yep, that's, that's it. He doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> and he's got it spot on. Okay, the broth, out of five. Ooh, that was pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna have to give that a five. I really do. I've only oh, given wow. it on one episode before. Wow. That is a five. X Factor. Was there something ridiculously good about it? Just the flavor itself was good enough. That was the X Factor and all that. All right. I'm gonna give that a one. Garnish is a zero. Mm. I could only see spring onions. Noodles. Noodles were fine. I thought it was a little bit soft. Soft and glossy. The meat, two out of two. For, for what we ordered, we didn't get the whole. Yeah, so the definition of a fadak bit or special anywhere else in the world means it's got brisket, uh, saik, uh, which is tripe, and gun, which is tendon. So it was missing three things. I don't know why, because I don't know why they missed brisket. But anyway, for what we got, it was still pretty good. That's two out of two. Uh, the meat to noodle ratio, uh, that was pretty good as well. Consistent. Was it hot? Yes, yes it although was. they took a bit of time to bring the that side plate out. Freshness is a side plate. This is the plate with the bean sprouts and mm. Thai basil and the, the, the lemon. So, so. I, I give it probably half. There's one sprig of basil. That's a bit light. <laughs> are we recording? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, too much MSG. Are you feeling all right? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling it's... a little bit itchy yeah. in the throat. I'm gonna have to give this uh, a minus half. So this is the only criteria where you can score a minus. Right. Okay, value. Add a two. I thought that was... Good value for the area. Yep, that's right. 15.90 for Broadbeat. Service. Oh, there was no service. So I'm gonna have to give that a zero. I had to go up to the counter. And we, right. we sat there for a good, good 10 yeah. minutes and yeah, no yeah. one served Sitting us. At the front door. Cleanliness. Oh, uh, look, this one's a bit controversial. Whenever you go to a, a store that's a little bit old, it doesn't matter how clean it is, it still looks a bit dirty. I'd say it's authentic. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call it. Look, I'm gonna have to give it a, a half out of one. 
And was it cash only? No, so that scores a one. All right, bro, let's do a bit of math. Two, five, one, one, two, one, one, point five, minus point five. So we get rid of that. 16, 16 and a half. Wow. Perfect. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. So in terms of the broth taste, uh, this is probably the highest that I've rated on the Gold Coast and it'll be hard to beat for all the other stores on the Gold Coast as well. That's what I've had in Brizzy. We're not, we're not in the GC, GC. that's it. <laughs> yeah, so there that is go. it for tonight's episode. I'm gonna get stuck into my gelato. Hopefully I don't get a cold tonight. Mm. And yeah, thank you, Ronald, no for joining me on this episode. I'm, Anytime. I'm sure when I hit Sydney, yep. you know what's up. We'll do a special. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good night, guys. See ya. Someone commented that I mark really harshly, but I don't think that's very true because I'm actually a really nice guy, believe it or not. I've got a heart and a lot of compassion. And the intention of this channel isn't for me to just go around ripping on every single restaurant. Obviously, if they do a crap fur, I'm going to call it. But when I see a good, honest representation of this dish, like I saw at this place, I'm actually on their side. And by the looks of things, this is a family-run business. They're hardworking, and at the end of the day, they're just trying to make a living. I'm gonna back this little store by saying, just keep doing what you're doing. The food is excellent. The store is very busy. And sure, the service might be a bit slow, but then again, for Broad Beach, which is like prime real estate, it's very expensive. For $15.90, for a bowl which I consider almost perfect, what else do you want? And that is it for tonight's video. I hope you like the change in style and pace of this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and drop a comment if you have any. And yeah, I'll see you guys for next week's fur review. Did that just go up? It did. Whew.